what's up, Chiefs Kingdom? You're on another episode of Chiefs Focus Live. Uh, not a whole lot of news this week going on, except a lot of Chris Jones rhetoric on Twitter. It just seems like it never ends. The guy puts out an Instagram post, and everybody's trying to decipher it for God knows what. But anyway, um, I, I swear to God, the guy could <laughs> picture a, two flowers and a piece of bubble gum and somebody's going to try and figure out what it means. But hey man, he's his own guy. He can do what he wants. Um, I did hear one good thing. Let's just hope it's real. Supposedly he's going to be back by midweek next week. So we'll see if that actually happens. Um, I'm going to get this out of the way real quick. From what I understand, he put out that week eight thing just to kind of push the narrative a little bit, not with the fans, but with the team. So, um, we'll just see how that goes. But anyway, uh, today we could talk about an offensive player and a defensive player and who we think might make that roster. What's up, guys? Oh, not a ton here in uh, Kansas City. I know everybody that's up here just can't wait to get out of this heat that we're having. It's been too hot. Very hot. Not fun. I heard it was over 100, right? Yeah, we've had 100 since Monday. It's not been fun. It's hot there. I mean, when it, hey, man, when it gets 100 here, I'm like, okay, that's cool. I mean, it's been like, I mean, like 113. Yeah, that's your heat index? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Um, there's nothing worse than over 100-degree weather or even 90-degree weather and then having 100% humidity. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's terrible. I mean, like, yeah, we just went through that. And at this point, it's not even exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> And it's supposed to be like that in September too, so it'll be very interesting to kind of see how September. It's going to work out. Yep, part of September as oh well. Oh my Next god! Couple weeks. Wow. Well, we don't ever get out of the hundreds until usually September anyway. But it's been relatively decent for the last eight days. It's been we actually had a sixty-nine degree day, which was the first time since nineteen fifty. But it was during that Hillary thing that was going on, so we, mm. you know, the hurricane. So we got the remnants of that. It's kind of peaceful for a little bit, but so uh, kick it off, Quentin. What do you think? Okay, um, you want to talk about Tony real quick, and then we can get into our bigger segment. Let's yep. Do it. I, yep. So I, I think uh, that you go ahead and, and I'll tell you what I heard. We'll yeah, you can there. go ahead and tell us what what you heard. All I heard was is that he is um, prepared to play week one. Um, he will be ready. Now, whether he's on a pitch count or snap count, that's going to be remain remain to be seen, or if he plays at all. But it sounds like he's going to be ready to go. So there was even talk of him maybe a sighting of him during this last preseason game. So we'll just have to see if that happens. But it sounds like he's uh, progressing nicely from what team doctors are saying. So what do you think? Oh, sorry. I thought Quinn was going to say something. No, I, that'd be very nice if we could have Tony back. I mean, he's done a lot of great things for the Chiefs. It is concerned he did get that knee surgery. I think overall he's going to do a lot of great things for the Chiefs. He's going to be able to help the team. I mean, he's another person that can just make the offensive even more dynamic than what it has been in years past. I believe he could be better than Dante Hall and Tyreek Hill combined in certain situations. Not saying he's better than both. But I see both those players in him. I think he's going to do a lot of great things. If he comes back week one, great. I expect him to be in a pitch count. But if he doesn't come back for the first couple games, I think the Chiefs will be okay because we've shown in preseason that the roster, for the most part, is pretty deep. So I think overall we're going to see a lot of good things are going to happen. If he comes back, great. If not, I think the guys we have will be able to pull the Chiefs in for a while. Yeah. I, I just think that obviously you can't rush it, right? Uh, you got the Lions week one. It's a that look. It's a bad. That's a bad defense. Okay, it, it was bad last year. That's why we saw the Lions getting all these shootouts and why Jared Goff and that offense had to put up such large offensive numbers week in and week out because that defense was trash bags. Okay, uh, and not even like hefty trash bags, like those clear ones that rip as soon as you look at them wrong. It was just bad. Yeah. And I don't need to come out throwing all around the football field to be productive. So let me make sure that everybody's coming back healthy. 
We've got some other players that are questionable heading into week one. Let's take it easy. It's an NFC game. If for some reason you lose it, you're not hurting yourself in any tiebreakers. It's literally week one. Don't rush into it. I agree. I agree. I I'm looking at should. the – oh, go ahead, JP. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, just, I don't – no, you're fine. I just don't think they should rush it either. But, hey, if it's something that they feel like he can do, then more power to him. But, you know, if, if – looking playing Detroit is, is like the game that you want. I'm not saying they're a bad football team, but they're not like the strongest either. And actually an article came out about Jared Goff the other day, and it was kind of comical because it said – there are two things that Jared, Gar- Jared Goff is actually above average at and everything else he's below average at. And that was pretty much being a quarterback. So they're going to have to heavily rely on their defense. But um, if he's I, not there, I'm not worried. <laughs> I do, when I look at the Chiefs' schedule, it'd be kind of best just to sit him because you've looked at the first eight games. The Chiefs are playing against some pretty decent defense. I mean – you're going to obviously want to win all your AFC games. When it comes to NFC games, yes, we would like the Chiefs to win. But when it comes to the end of the day, you want to win those AC games, specifically your divisional, divisional round games to help you in the ranking. And when you also look at it as well, I mean, the Chiefs are going to be playing some tough teams. I mean, you're going to play the Dolphins, the Eagles. you got the Broncos in there a time or two, the Vikings, the Jets with Aaron Rodgers. The Bears might be able to do something. The Jaguars are kind of another team where people are like, hmm, I don't know. So, I mean – if the Chiefs can roll out there with the guys they have without Tony and win some of those games, that'd be great. But I think the Chiefs kind of need to look for the overall picture. Hey, let's get through this uh, st- tough stretch of eight games. Let's try to go through six and two and five and three, kind of reevaluate things there, like the Chiefs kind of did last year. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be putting a lot of pressure. I think a lot of pressure is going to be put on Mahomes this first half of the season. I think it's going to be resting on his shoulders at the beginning. Just be- I mean, you know, last year it kind of was to a degree, but he did still have – guys that picked it up fairly quickly not to say that these guys aren't but you're still working with a lot of new players a lot of new elements around you so the fact that he's got three days in the pocket is is huge i mean that he could i mean he could go kiss his kid have his hot dog come back and still be you know not get touched it's crazy that that offensive line looks great uh it really does god i mean they got to figure out how to re-sign um, what's his name over a one-year deal because, man, I don't want a one-year rental with him if he's going to play like this throughout the season. Donovan Smith. And basically, they're the uh, two uh, Secret Service 2.0, which coined a couple years ago. This office is the line is just better, and they're going to do a lot of great things. And basically, you get a lot of pain, pancake blocks this year. I can't wait to see what they're going to be able to do. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool just to see. But if, hey, man, if Tony's not out there, look, we got a lot of talented players. Rasheed Rice has really stepped up. Uh, we know what Sky Moore can do. We know what, really, I mean, we know what they all can do, and we still got Kelsey. I don't know. Does anybody notice that Kelsey's kind of got this Hitler thing going on right now, and I'm not really uh, – really It's El with, Trevador. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, but he looks like Hitler. Um, he walked out on a stage. And we've been demonetized. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he walked out on a – I think it was a – fundraiser thing that he was doing and he walked out there and I thought wait a minute it's wearing 87 but that does not look like Kelsey and it was actually Kelsey he just looks totally different the guy's got also, a new look every time I turn around also Mom's wearing a hat during press conferences folks very I'm very curious to see if he's actually rocking a new hairstyle for week one so that's something he was else going to, watch to. Well. so hey, we'll see he said he was going to he said it was time to change the do so let's see mm-hmm. if he changes the do if he starts playing back everyone's gonna tell him he needs to grow it back yep <laughs> That's exactly what will happen. You should have never cut your hair. Hey, yeah. <laughs> he was a baseball player. His dad was a baseball player. So, you know, he, he's real into that. Don't change anything when mm-hmm. something good is yep. happening. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, I knew guys that didn't. I'm not kidding you, and it's gross. They didn't wash their jock strap for yeah, an entire yeah, yeah. baseball you gotta, season. You got to mm-hmm. keep the, the good around. Yeah. So they Super- just kept the, they kept the stank. All just, yeah, superstitions, su- especially in baseball. It doesn't work. Too. I'm I sorry. called it super stank. I couldn't. Stank. There was no way in hell like really you were ever going to see me um, do that. No, it wasn't going to happen. I had no superstitions when it came to that. I, I just couldn't do it. I mean, no way I could go 162 mm-hmm. games and not wash my jock strap. That's just, or even change it for that matter. You know, just throw it in the locker and start over. 
It's gross. But anyway, guys, I did it. Um, what else we got? Who do you got? Who you guys got making out of the out of the seven wide receivers that we know right now, or just say eight wide receivers? Who do you got that you think may be on the fringe and not making this roster? I think Nico Romingo, depending on if he plays his game and how much, he will just be a IR stash. For those who are listening, I'm doing that air quotes. The Chiefs did that with Byron Prio. I think that's one person we can see the Chiefs see the talent, but they're going to be like, you know what, you're hurt. It's not going to take a full year, but we're going to keep you on the roster because we see some value and things like that. And it's going to be beneficial for him because he used to lower the playbook, but also be the Chiefs the second goal around too. So I think that's what's going to happen. I think Nico, Nico Romingo is my guy. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're correct. There's a lot of depth here, and as a you know, it's an unfortunate injury, but this is how you can sort of. I don't want to say skate the rules, but you throw a guy, you put him on IR. He doesn't count against the 53 man roster. You protect him because another team can't come in and steal somebody off you off of IR. So this is a guy that you can that you can protect, sort of like what Kansas City did last year with Justin Ross, right? Rinse and repeat. So. Yeah. Ramingo was a guy that we've been keeping track of, and it's unfortunate that he got hurt. But, you know, maybe this is sort of a blessing in disguise because if he didn't get hurt, he's probably on another roster to start the season. That is a fair point because this room is very, very deep, and it'd be nice to have him. But also, a team could pick him up. He's done some kind of great things in preseason. We know all the other DMs are watching. What's up, Philip? How you doing, bro? I agree with both of you guys. That's who I kind of had in mind. Um, it was going to end up being him. And I mean, Justin Ross is absolutely making this roster, so we don't have to worry about that. It was kind of comical, Andy, when they asked Andy how many wide receivers you're going to go with. He said six or seven. We know it's going to be seven. I mean, Andy is just trying to be Mr. Evasive Andy, but there's no way he's not going with seven wide receivers. It'd be like, especially this year. I could almost, I would understand if you had. A bunch of guys that were two or three years into the system, but he doesn't. So he's got to go with all seven. Okay, so I have a sort of a crazy thought. Okay. So we all know what's going on uh, in Indianapolis with their whole running back situation, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor and all yep. that that's going on. So for those of you that don't know, there's been – Jonathan Taylor has been complaining about his contract. He wants a new deal. The Colts have given him permission to seek a trade. Jonathan Taylor and the owner of the Colts, Jim Irsay, who is now becoming the next super vocal NFL owner. Um, they're butting heads. So I had the crazy thought. What if, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, I'll Jonathan wait. Taylor gets traded out of Indianapolis for whatever, picks, a player, whatever. Well, Colts have a young quarterback that they need to develop, and the best friend of a young quarterback is a run game. Okay. So what if the Chiefs are then like, hey, we got this, we got this guy. Okay. His name's Clyde. It's been he's been okay. So <laughs> we just slide that under the table. You get rid of Jonathan Taylor. You need a running back. Huh. Well, let me show you the storefront. I got this guy. And that's where Clyde ends up going if the Colts end up trading Jonathan Taylor. Hey, man. I mean, I wouldn't complain, but he's asking for a lot. He want, I think he wants a first. What do you want? Two oh, they can say he, that. he wants what a first round say? pick hey, or something way, equivalent to that. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Equivalent first and something first. equivalent. Yeah. So Clyde's, well, Clyde was a first round pick. <laughs> so, I mean, it, I mean, you can kind of say it was comparable. I mean, so you know. You, you know, it sort of turns into a triangle trade. I'm just saying, I was at work today and I just had that thought. I don't think it's completely unreasonable. I think it could work. The only issue is salary cap, but let's just say how salary cap just kind of floated out the window. I think the Chiefs could get it done, but I also think it'd be kind of be it'd be difficult with our running back room with Pacheco because we say he's a running back one with Prince, with McKinnon. I mean, that's four running backs that are pretty dynamic in only one football and are demanding offense. I mean, I mean, I'm I don't want to talk about the training. Let me rephrase that. Jonathan Taylor would not come to Kansas City. Oh, Jonathan okay. Taylor would go to a third-party team. Oh, okay. The Colts now need a running back, 
So we send them Clyde. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm oh, okay with that. So it's a yeah, triangle I'm, I'm okay, okay with that all day okay. long. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's what you meant by triangle move. I'm yeah. good with that. I'm I'm okay with. I that. don't think that's yeah. a completely unreasonable thought process. I think it can happen. No. It's very possible they're going to need a running back. They could very well take him. John Taylor's gone. They'll take him. It, it, I think it could work out. Probably a four fifth round pick. If that, I mean, we saw Isaiah Simmons, who I've been talking about. For those who have listened to this show for the last two years, I want the Chiefs to get into the draft and also to trade for. Just got traded to the Giants or some round pick. Um, there are some guys out there. So I mean, seventh so round pick. Man. Yep. And he's very good. He just assists him. Didn't work with the Cardinals. Yep. Well, I will say this. if is, It wouldn't hurt my feelings at all if Clyde was gone. I think everybody knows that It watches this show. Um, he's I don't know if he's worth the seventh-round pick. But, hey, if that can be made. Now, here's a, here's a uh, scenario, though. So Josh Jacobs supposedly said he was going to report before week one to the Raiders. Yeah. This is what he was supposedly going to do. What if, what if um, the Raiders are not going to use that as leverage because they're pissed at Josh Jacobs? So why wouldn't they? Well, you know, we can just go pick up Josh Jacobs. He'll pay. He'll play for ten million. You know, on a one year well, deal. Because they can because he is. They, he hasn't signed that franchise tag, but he's not technically a free agent because the Raiders have dibs. I know but what I'm saying is if they want to get rid of him, say if they want to. Oh, if they like rescind the, the franchise tag. Correct. If okay. they want to rescind that franchise tag, I guarantee you Taylor would play on a one-year deal for $10 million and then have an option to play for more on a longer term deal, which they can extend out later. But I bet he'd do it. I mean, yeah, that's mm. like too complicated for the Raiders to do though. Yeah, it really is. Mark Davis doesn't have that kind of mentality. He's just not there. Um, he's just not all there anyway. But anyway, it'd be a it'd be a crazy scenario if you saw him in the AFC West somehow, which I don't want to see him in the AFC West unless he's playing for us. Um, and we don't need him. And frankly, we just don't. We've got a really solid roster. What's your defensive uh, What's your defensive mindset right now? Just my overall thoughts on the defense. Yeah, players that might might not make the cut might make the cut. Okay, man. Yeah, I'm throwing it on you quick. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, it's it's really hard to come because I was really looking forward to seeing a guy like Nick Jones, but his injury, I don't know what happens there. I know yep. typically you can't like cut a guy that's injured, but I don't know if he's a guy maybe that gets stashed on IR. Uh, finger injury, fingers injury uh, can be so weird because it could be one thing, you know, you just – put a glove on and you're good to go. It's not like he has to catch the ball. That's what I think Ward or someone did that a couple years ago. Just put a glove on, just played with it. Yeah. Ward played with a, like a cast. The baseball, the baseball mitt that they they put on to like steal bases. So, you know, you can put on that and you could move forward or it's just something that you don't want to deal with at all. So Nick Jones to me is, especially when you have other corners like, uh, Halisi, is that how you say Halisi. his name? Halisi? Yep, Halisi. Halisi. Yeah. Halisi or Halisi. Yeah. So that's a guy that I think can take advantage of now having an open spot on the roster. So in terms of like actual guys, uh, man, that let's just go with that uh, Boodle corner for yeah. safety. I think the Chiefs are really deep there, and I know that they – They've tried to use him a lot in the preseason, especially later in the games. But I just think at that corner slash safety spot, there's just too much depth there, and somebody good is going to get cut. Mm-hmm. I agree with Quentin. Boodle has been with this team for like the last two or three preseasons, and he's shown flashes, but I also feel like there's been some times we've kind of seen some more woes and whatnot. So, unfortunately, he was the guy I could see the Chiefs cutting just due to all those things that happened with there's just been other guys over the time that just kind of showed and elevated their play overall as a whole. I mean, as much as it sucks, that's unfortunately the game, the the business, the way things work out. It's kind of crazy with him. You know, he's been on and off this team more than anybody I've ever seen. I mean, he's cut, he's brought back, he's cut, he's brought back, he's on the practice squad, he's brought back, he's cut off the practice squad. I mean, he's just been all over 
when it comes to the Chiefs, but he always ends up back with the Chiefs. I do agree with you. I think the Nick Jones injury is going to be, because from what I understand, he fractured part of his hand as well. So that's going to take some time to heal. I think between him, I mean, that might give Boodle an opportunity to be that sixth guy, you know, maybe that fifth guy, but it's going to, it's going to be short lived if his hands heals up faster than expected. Mm -hmm. Um, Nick Jones is kind of one of those, he's pretty dynamic and I think he's kind of a ball hawk too. So if you, you know, you take away his catching ability, it's going to hurt him a little bit, you know, if he's able to snag a ball from somebody. So I don't know. Um, Anybody on the defensive line you see that may not make it? I don't know because there's just so little. Kando. I think there's a chance Kando could be cut. Just hasn't showed a lot or hasn't showed a lot of last couple years. He's been injured. Just really hasn't. I mean, he's made the roster, but he's at the kind of the bottom of it. Kind of similar what we saw kind of with a Speaks. He was here for a year, did some stuff, but then the Chiefs end up having to cut him. So I think at the end of the day, he could be someone we could possibly see eventually gone. As much as it would be not good because the draft investment, you also have to look at and see from the whole areas as well. We're getting better play from some of our later rounds in free agent guys and maybe even undrafted. So at the end of the day, it's that may be another move where the Chiefs maybe keep him for another year or they're like, no, we're just going to have to cut ties. He just really hasn't gone on the field in any meaningful games. I that's feel absolutely – that, that, that you should. Um, that's absolutely right. He's the one. I don't see Kando making this team. I just don't see it happening. He's just now, not been – I'll say this. Good. Because a man who is suspended – and suspended players don't count against the roster limit. So when week one rolls around and you have the – he no longer – Amena who's no longer on the roster as a 53-man guy, that's a guy you might keep for the first six weeks, though. But I don't think they see – honestly, in my opinion, if Kando makes a 53-man roster, he's going to stay on there for the season. I don't see them cutting him halfway through the season if he gets cut – in the beginning stages, he could be brought back late. I just don't see the Chiefs doing that to a draft pick. I mean, Cornell Powell, different story. But, again, I'm not seeing that they're going to have someone be on the team and then cut him, especially if a draft pick you just put some time effort into. He Undrafted guys, running. free agents, yes. But this uh, – I, I I don't think the Chiefs would send this message. That's just my opinion because I feel like they believe a lot of the personality and brand and stuff that kind of goes out there. He could be a guy that goes from – if. First of all, you're probably going to have other injuries too. That is fair. That so is he fair. could be a guy that plays, is on the roster, makes the 53, and then another injury happens on the defensive line. Or he makes the 53 when Charles Amenahu comes back, he goes to the practice squad. That could happen that could as happen. well. That could yeah. happen as well. I just think either he's going to be on this team for the entire season he makes it, or he's not going to be on the team. It's either or. I don't think they're going to do a double side situation. If this were so- any other position, I would agree with you. Okay. But the defensive line, especially the tackle position, is just so thin. It heading is heading into the season that I think you need bodies and you need bodies that know your system. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I agree with you, and it is difficult when your leader of the defense is not there, kind of showing everyone around. I don't know. I just at this point, I feel. He's either going to be there week one or not. I don't think they're going to do an elevation. I do believe, however, I do see the train. The sorry, not the training camp. The practice squad is an extension of the team, even though I mean it is and it isn't. If he makes one of those, he is going to be on this team either way. If he doesn't make one of those, I think the Chiefs are like you know what, it's not going to work. But thinking about now, I'm kind of how the dialogue with you guys. I believe they're going to keep him just for the sake of the issues with Aminu and all the stuff around that. Yeah, that 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 sucks. And the fact that you know, right? I know they wanted to bring back Dunlap, and right now they're they're kind of handcuffed. They um, can't even do veteran minimum. No, two hundred fifty thousand away. Try, yeah, they're two hundred and fifty grand away from veteran minimum right now. So I mean, I know they could probably pick, they can pick that up from another player if that's what they. And when it comes down to it, it may still happen. Um, I still feel like it's going to happen. Actually, I feel like he's going to end up on this team at some point during the next few weeks, but uh, right now they're a little handcuffed with this whole Chris Jones situation. Hey, I wanted to throw out a hypothetical really quick that I did. So I was on the um, 
the uh, SFR app. And I asked uh, the 49ers group, I said, just out of curiosity, I said, is your fan base absolutely flipping out? And he, he said, about what? And I said, about Bosa. And they said, no. I said, so the PSFF, I'm sorry. I said it SFR. Um, I said, I'm just curious because it seems like our fan base is losing their friggin' minds over this Chris Jones situation. And they're coming up with different scenarios and different, mind, you know, everybody's got a reason why they hate him, why they don't hate him, why he should get his money, why he shouldn't get his money. He goes, no, we're used to this crap. And I said, what? And he goes, there's really hardly any fans at all that are saying anything. He said, honestly, he said, we're used to signing people at the last minute. And that's what will happen with him again. He'll, he'll come back at the last minute and be done with it. And I, so in that conversation, I said, so your, your fan base, he said, out of, he said, honestly, he said, there's probably a tenth of a percent of the fans that really are making a big deal about it. He goes, we're so used to it now. And I said, well, you'd think that be the same with Chris Jones, given the fact that he did it, you know, on his first contract and now he's doing it again on this one. Although this one he's held out longer. Um, but man, I mean, it's, it's gotten to, to the point of hatred. And he goes, they hate him. And I said, some of the fans just do not like the man anymore. And they're calling him out on it. Well, and they are pretty surprised. My opinion in the little situation, and don't know much much of 49ers, but besides the Chiefs took a Super Bowl away from them. Shout out to the 2019 champs. <laughs> when I look at this situation, I see it from two different sides. Boza, he's fighting for his first contract. You can make the argument he does deserve money. He, in a way, not is a defense, but is a cornerstone piece. Chris Jones, in a way, is the defense. But I will say this, I'm not, and I don't pay attention to Bosa's Twitter, but I'm not seeing all these tweets out about, hey, I'll be there week eight, uh, posting inspirational quotes, things like that. Chris Jones, we established, that's his thing, that's what he used to do, JP. I just need you to become the Chris Jones translator at this point. He did a couple other tweets there, I didn't see you there. I mean, as much as it irritates me now, I've talked about this to the, about talked about this for literally the last month and a half it feels like yeah nothing is going to change i can't do anything you cannot do anything christian's going to do what he wants to do i mean it's going to get to the point where he's going to start losing one point i think four one eight million dollars a day so i am able to kind of see what you guys are saying uh throughout the day as a whole and it's kind of interesting to see the dialogue i don't think it's going to get to that point but with chris jones it also shows me this is it about him or is it about the team and it's been interesting that the media in Kansas City has been asking Mahomes question about it, and Mahomes has been very smart by staying the path and basically saying, I'm not really going to answer that and kind of defer and say we support, basically says the political answer. Now, if it was me, it may have been a different story. But Mahomes is taking the right approach, and I say it's very interesting to kind of see the leaders of this team. They're not saying nothing publicly, but I was feeling behind the scenes they're kind of maybe a little irritated because – Moves were not been have not been able to be made due to this holdup that we honestly should have been figured out by now. I mean, I don't know why we're still. Again, I'm getting irritated thinking about it, so I'm just gonna move on. Take it away. Well, here, let me let me give you this really quick. So, <laughs> Harold Kuntz sent me this a couple of nights ago, and he goes, "Chris Jones to uh, Instagram," and I said, "Oh God!" It says, "You can do what you decide to do." but you cannot decide what you will decide to do. You can decide to con- sign the contract. That's yeah. pretty f- reasonable. So a guy by the name of Sam Harris put that up. I have no clue who Sam Harris is. Must be somebody rich. But regardless, uh, Harold said, what the hell does he mean by this? And I said, honestly, I have absolutely no idea. I mean, I don't know why he put it out there. Maybe he just like the quote. And this was probably it. I don't know, 9.30 my time when he sent it to me. So 11.30 your guys' time. And I thought, I, I really don't know what that, what he's trying to get with that. I don't know um, what it means. It, it, it's just weird. But I thought it was comical that Chris put that out there and everybody was replying to it. Everybody. I'm telling you, man, he must have had 3,500 replies. It was boom, boom, boom. I wish Didn't I had this Twitter. much power as a person in the world. God, That'd be kind of nice. Man. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome to be able to just snap your fingers and everything's good? You know, you can have everybody at your, you know, disposal whenever you need them and have fans drooling all over you. And then some of them, you know, may hate you right now. But he's got the he's got the attention of the entire 
Kansas City organization. And then he also has the attention of probably 28 other teams that are thinking, what if he doesn't come back? What if they decide to trade him? What, what, can we get him? Who can we dump? Who can we restructure? We got to get Chris Jones. So it's, 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 and honestly, I mean, even on Twitter, there's been argument over argument about this whole situation with Chris Jones. Why do we have to pay him when, when we, you know, we didn't have to pay Justin Houston top dollar money. I said, man, times have changed. Justin Houston definitely got top dollar money, did not live Absolutely. up to that contract. So I don't know where that fan was. Yeah, that contract was part of the reason that we had to change um, yeah. GM. Fifty-one well, yeah, and a I mean, half million dollars guaranteed, one hundred and one overall. Yeah, I mean, you're talking I about that a, was in two thousand seventeen, and I was a young Chiefs fan, and I remember seeing that. And I'm like, huh, that much? Yeah, okay, if that's what you're we're talking about. Do. Years away, that was actually before fifty. That was sixteen, wasn't it? Yeah, sixteen or seventeen. Sixteen or seventeen. Sixteen or seventeen. You know, he said, "Well, you know, why does Chris Jones deserve so much more? Look how good Houston did. Really, or Houston fell off. He got his contract. He would had some moments, but he did not show up, especially in the big games. And as much as it stinks, we can't just get it. We can't be attached to the players. At the end of the day, some are going to be traded off. And as much as I would like to see Justin Houston back." From what JPS said multiple times for the last couple of years, it looks like there's some bad blood between the two sides. Unfortunately, definitely is. He's and not no, coming back. I mean, the Chiefs <laughs> tried. They tried to work with him. Restructure didn't want to do that. They tried to find trade partners. He was like, no. So the Chiefs like, okay, yep. we're done with this. We can't move on as a team. And I would say after we moved on from him, we won a Super Bowl. Yep. And you know the funny thing so about much. that whole thing you're talking about, Caleb, is that. He actually agreed to restructure, and then when they offered it to him, he said no. Again, one like, surprise me. Players I mean, say, again, players say one thing publicly, then behind the doors they don't. So I mean, yeah, it just made no sense. sense to me. And he's not been the same player since. We know that. I mean, it's it, it's just sometimes he's. I understand the money aspect of it. I get it. I mean, believe me, it money makes the world go round. But also, you have you have to think of it from a, two different perspectives. I guess the team is doing it in a in a, in a way that's not going to cripple them moving forward for the next two or three years, and he's doing it because he wants to make sure he's secure for the next until he dies. Okay, and his family's secure. So I get the the, the, the I get the whole concept behind what the team is doing but here's one thing i will say and you know what it may piss off somebody it may not this is on veach as well i'm telling you it is i think disagree how so okay think about something if you it, i understand the whole concept of keeping keeping players rotate rotating players and you know, there's certain positions you can do that with one guy compared it to tyree kill that is not a good comparison because you have Patrick Mahomes that can make everybody better. Chris Jones is the guy that makes everybody better on that defensive line. When you have a generational talent, you can't just continue to draw a line in the sand and say, you know what, cross it or don't. At some point, you have to go, okay, let's meet in the middle. I'm not going to just put out a number and say, okay, I'm done. There's got to be some negotiation when it comes to that. And I feel like Brett Veach has done that because he got so hardened by Arizona back in the day, and he's been hard ever since. People are mistaken about the Tyreek Hill situation as well. There was there was a low ball offer to Tyreek Hill for a reason. We know what that reason is, but we're not going to go into that. The point I'm trying to make is, is that Veach needs to understand that he has a player that he cannot replace. If we didn't have Chris Jones last year, we didn't win the Super Bowl. We weren't in the Super Bowl. It's that simple. People need to realize that. He needs to realize. I think he knows that. But he's teetering on that, oh, my God, he's almost 30 thing. I'm with JP on this one. I don't care if he's almost 30. He's relatively injury-free. He's had one injury in the last eight years, and that was his arm. And he played through it. Aaron Donald got five sacks last year, and they signed him at 31 years old. 31, everybody, on that big, fat-ass contract. Now, here's the thing. Everybody knows Aaron Donald was grossly overpaid. Everyone knows that. 
That was a stupid contract out of desperation because they had nobody left. They had one of the best defensive lines in the league because they dumped so much money in every other position. They had to cut everybody. They, you know, they had Sue. They had everybody on that defensive line. They had some of the best corners in the league that can come up and do phenomenal safety blitzes and corner blitzes to help the defensive line out. Great linebackers. But when he said he was t- when he was teetering on retirement, they offered him. The- he didn't even think twice. It wasn't even. Uh, he didn't have to counter it. How would you counter thirty one point seven million a year? They that team fucked the NFL. I'm just saying. I'm going to tell you right now. That contract alone screwed everybody in the league when it comes to that position. Because any talent that you have, whether it be a Chris Jones elite talent or you have somebody that's above average, like Quinn and Williams, they're demanding big money. The difference is there's an $8 million gap between Aaron Donald and Quinn and Williams, who is number two, the second highest paid player in that position. Meet in the middle. Give the man $28 million a year. Give him his $75 million guaranteed. Do it on a four-year deal and be friggin' done with it. I, should, and, I bet you anything he'd take it. And here's why I disagree. I believe Chris Jones should also take it from the team perspective. You can only do us up to a certain point. In life, we all have limitations. There's some cards we are dealt with. The Chiefs are dealt with with cards in certain situations. There's a reason why they didn't pay $30 million, exclude all the off-the-field stuff. There's a reason why. You can't pay him $30 million when you can put that $30 million into three to four other wide receivers that are, ju- that are just as good when you add them up overall. I think but you Chris can't Jones find that with Chris Jones. Well, and that's the thing. That's that's understandable. That's a hard position, and I think that she's anticipated to be have to be this difficult. I think they at least thought he was going to be there for the camps and all these things. But every time, it just seems at some points it's not he's not a team player. Now I don't know what Red Bridges is thinking, but I also feel like he's partially annoyed with this whole situation. The Chiefs have pretty much, and I feel like have operated with him in good faith. Gave him a good come back the first time around and have been very lenient, especially when you're not coming to practice and things. So I'm talking about stuff in the past. So I feel like I think you guys should come together and figure out a deal. Now, is he going to get a $75 million guarantee? That'd be nice. $28 million, I can think that. But all these fake reports of $30 million, yeah, so it just gets confusing. Too. It gets too mumble jumbled. Yeah. It's like someone trying to retell their day and they're told to four, four different ways to four different people. I want Chris Jones to be here, but I think also from my perspective as a fan and also looking to all this, something has to give. Either he's going to be here for this season or he's going to sit out. If he sits out, it's not financially liable to him, and it's going to hurt the Chiefs. Who's going to blink first? That's my question, but I feel in this situation, I know it's kind of a big deal that Jonathan Taylor won, but I think the Chiefs might win it just due to the whole things when it comes to the fines. Jonathan Taylor is not getting fined right now. Nick Bosa is getting fined. And Chris, sorry, no, not Nick Bosa. Chris Jones is getting fined because this is the second contract. Rookies, after when they're pushing for that second, second contract, fain, fain, sorry, fines can be waived. And if fines can be waived, then okay, Chris Jones is going to do it. But now, since that's not for the second contract, it's a little bit more risk out there. So if Chris Jones is willing to bet on stuff, it looks like it. Will it pay off? We won't know. What do you think, Quentin? Well, I will say this, and I learned this last night uh, by reading a, reading a tweet from a former agent, NFL agent, that if Chris Jones sits out any regular season games, that will affect his salary, his franchise tag for the coming year. Yes. So let's say he he takes – he waits out till week eight. He's going to miss eight game checks, and that will put him at about $24 million for him to make for the rest of the year. That means his franchise tag – is not going to be based on his at his salary now. It will actually be based off of whatever money he's going to make remaining throughout the year. So the Chiefs being able to franchise tag him this coming the this coming off season becomes more realistic because it's not going to be thirty two million dollars. No. So he's only hurting himself, which is why I think Chris Jones is smart enough to know that that's this is not something that you can do. And Chris Jones will be back. That's why I heard he was coming back next week, actually. So I heard he was going to be back mid next week. But I agree with you, Quentin. 
and that was Corey, I think, that said that, um, that ex-agent, if I remember right. Um, I read the same thing. And not only that, it's a lot more money. I mean, eight games at $1.2 million a game, and then you've already lost $2 million in fines. How much money is that, dude? I mean, yeah. you know, you're talking $10, $11 million to lose in season. That means you're going to get paid – Roughly 17, 18 million bucks for the season when you could have made 28. I mean, we're, we're I guess, be 26 now with after the $2 million in fines. But regardless, that would be, and, you know, they made a big deal about his tweet saying he could afford it. He was talking about, I can tell you now, he was talking about the training camp fines. He wasn't talking about sitting out eight games. It's just because you can afford it doesn't mean you're stupid enough to lose it because he ain't a billionaire. Sorry, but he's not. Look up his net worth right now. I guarantee you, it ain't what everybody thinks it is. Because he spends more money than Alex Smith ever thought about spending. And Alex Smith made a lot of money in his career. And he's worth $35 million. That's his net worth. Or at least it was last year. So, you don't give up $10, 12000000 million on a whim you know, on a, on a hope and prayer that you're going to be able to get signed by somebody else or push the team into doing something. I just don't think that's going to happen. I just don't see it happening. I mean, he's supposed to come back next week. I'm sure he will be now. Question will be, will he play week one? Spag says he will. What do you guys think? Um, Not. It's not going to hurt anything to hope he doesn't get hurt. I mean, you got to get used to the hits. Soft tissue injuries is probably what he's going to be dealing with this year, unfortunately. So if he goes out there and proves it's all wrong, has 20 sacks, five force fumbles, then he proved us wrong. If he doesn't have any, he's injured a bunch. It proves it just didn't work out. Yeah, you almost have to have him on a pitch count, on a snap count. Yeah. Well, you know what? Go ahead. You man. know, the Lions aren't the best team in the NFL. And you're facing Jared Goff, who is not super athletic outside the pocket. He's not a guy that's at risk of scrambling. And you manufacture pressure with your linebackers and safety. So, yeah. you know, that's what you end up doing in the first game. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. By the way, there's a quote from Patrick Mahomes himself that said he is preparing himself to come back for week one. I actually have it on – I got an image of it. That tells me that he's doing something, whether it get him, getting himself in football condition or whatever the case may be in Miami before he comes back. I don't know. Spags, the one thing he did say was he was worried about him being injured. Let's hope he doesn't get injured. Let's hope he's in football shape. He knows he keeps himself in phenomenal shape anyway. But let's just hope he's not, you know – going to have football related injuries because he's not in football shape. And for anybody that doesn't know what football shape is, look it up on Google because it's very simple. We can, you can be the baddest ass looking dude in the world. Go out there and take a few hits. If you've never, if you haven't taken them in a year and see what it feels like, go out there and take them. If you haven't, you know, I mean, if you have taken them a year, it's hard, but if you sit out for six or seven or eight months and then step into a field where people are pancaking you, and putting their knees into your thighs and everything else, you're going to feel it. Yeah, Trent Green talked about it uh, during the broadcast, I think, of the first preseason game. He, he says he liked to get hit just a little bit during preseason to sort of get him back in that mode. Yeah, Mahomes has been bitching because he hasn't been hit. He hasn't been touched in the pre- you know, in his two preseason appearances. He said this old line is just too good. He said he even asked him, you know. You know, I like to get feel that you take that one hit, you know, just to get feel see what it feels like, but they won't they don't want him to get hit. So they're they're protecting him very well. I'm happy with that. Uh that old line scares me. But the whole thing is I would be scared if I was in a defensive line going up against them this year. But um and the fact that they're giving Mahomes that much more time to be able to find an open man. Uh but Chris, I think if he plays week one and he plays well then he's probably going to be somewhat okay. Uh, he does, he is, if he didn't get himself in any kind of condition, football condition, 
he's risking, he's taking a big risk of getting injured, and his stock's going to drop like a rock if that happens. I mean, it just is what it is. If he starts sitting, you know, sitting on the bench because of injuries or limping off the field or taking a lot of, you know, doing this a lot and having people, you know, swap in and out, people are going to notice that. It's not going to help his case. Hope he comes back. I hope he comes back with a contract. But, you know, we just have to see how it plays out. Um, I still think that Veach needs to give a little bit. I do. I mean, I'm sorry, but I think he needs to give a little bit. It, this is not just on Chris Jones. It's just not. I can't. I don't believe it. There's no way it is. Because any other team in this league would sell a kidney or both and live on dialysis to sign Chris Jones. So there's got to be some give and take. And I feel like Feech is being a little too hard-nosed on this, and he has been for a little while right now, I mean, especially because of the training camp situation. I also feel GM should be hard nosed. I mean, if you make a bad move, your reputation is on the line. I mean, yeah. I watched a video of Hugh Jackson, the turmoil stuff he got got through. He can't get a job back in the full after the terrible uh, area he had with the uh, Browns. Now I would say it wasn't all his fault. The GM didn't help, and a lot of other things, and plus the owner. But I also believe you have to set a line and stand in certain situations. Like I tell people all the time, there's a time to play and a time to work. I think Veach maybe should. Move the line a little bit, but also let guys know, like, hey, I want you here. I know you want to be here, but we have to figure out something that's going to be best for both of us. But but according to the report that just came, I think yesterday, I think by Schefter or Ari Marab, I forgot who it was, basically said, oh, no, it was Andy during a press conference. They haven't had ta- uh, communication in a while. He said he hasn't. Now, I don't know if he well, meant the team or if he meant. Yeah, and that's the thing. I like clarification on they didn't do that. So maybe we'll get a Brett Veach presser soon. But we haven't heard anything in a while. So that is concerning because you would think they would have some sort of communication, at least a coach. So I don't know what's going on there. Now, players have texted him, say he's in good spirits. Good spirits. I also feel, too, he could be losing some of his teammates by doing this as well. Again, he's a leader. We were just supposed to lead, but this is a different situation. Well, we'll just have to see how it plays out. I mean, I understand the whole being, you know, you got to, I guess, we're phrasing it a different way. You have to put a, a, a limit on things, but you don't want to sell it too short is what I'm trying to get at. Because you know what it does? Here's the problem that I have with this. And Quentin, I don't know what you think about this. And I don't know what you think about this, Caleb, but think about it from this perspective. If you were a player, say a top tier player with another team, or you're a third, fourth year guy that has just been killing it. And all of a sudden, you're on the trade block, whether it be for cap reasons or you went out from your team. Do you want to come and play for the Chiefs knowing that Brett Veach is probably not going to well, pay you? Here's the thing. If Chris Jones has been put up these amazing numbers, this he did this past season, the past three seasons, then, yes, I would be mad at Veach. But I also would say this. Chris Jones, I mean, yeah, he's shown up, but this was the first season you're like, dang, he really took that elevation step where Aaron Donald has been at, honestly, for the last five, six years. But he had help. I mean, Yes, he did have help. I would agree with you there. But I also feel like with Chris Jones, he just not reached that echelon that we were hoping he would have reached, honestly, 2019, 2020, I feel like. Well, you know, when you look at his numbers, he had 15 and a half sacks in 18. He had 15 and a half sacks this year. Now, it's kind of, you know, you look at it and you go, okay, contract years, things like that. But – in between those times, he was always there. He did a pretty good job of, of keeping that line secure, even with no help. I mean, think about who he had. We talked about this on the show over and over again, about him not having any help. You know, he had Frank Clark and him. Everybody else was just – and then he had a terrible defensive line coach. Joe Collins turned that defensive line around, completely turned it around. And I think maybe he is in his prime right now. If you really think about it, he's in his prime. So, I don't know, man. I, I don't, does, does anybody in that position deserve Aaron Donald money? No, they don't. I, I think that was, you know, that, that caused a lot of havoc within the NFL. 
It's caused a lot of havoc with Chris Jones, Joey Bosa. Other players are taking less money. I understand it. It was their first real contract. But when you're rolling on to your second one, I get the concept. I understand. You know this is going to be your last long-term deal. You know that in that position. So you want to go for the gusto. And every, for these Twitter guys that don't understand business, they want to attribute. I had a guy that actually argued with me and saying it was like working the stock market. Man, that is just a disrespectful thing to say to, about an NFL player. Excuse me? Yeah. He he was talking mm-hmm. like, I mean, you can go back and look. It was, it was fucking ignorance what it was. Uh, talking about how working the money with an NFL player is like working the stock market. Buying shares. You're not buying shares, you dumb bastard. You're, you're talking about a human being. That's number one. And a very good player. But we, everybody starts high. In business, that's how it works. You start high. You work, you negotiate, you work yourself to where both parties are happy and you move forward. I feel like Chris probably did start a little higher than what he written not originally, but after the Quinn and Williams signing, I feel like he he went higher than he probably should have. And then Veach held at a certain number and hasn't really come off of that number yet. And I think that's a problem. I would, if I was in his position, I'd probably feel the same way. If you're offering, look, man, one person I talked to said that he offered $500,000 more than Quentin Quentin Williams got. $500,000. You can't do that. Quentin, can you do that with a Chris Jones? I just, what's crazy is that we don't know the number. Like I know, but I'm just saying, if that was the case, if that was the real thing, this is what a guy told me that's kind of an insider. He said Veach came back at five hundred thousand more than Quinn and Williams. Do you think that should have been done if that was done? No. It is a little low ball. Yeah. There should have been three million more. I would Hell give. Hell yeah. Him. Yeah. So that would have been about twenty eight million a year. But he also was thinking from the standpoint: you're under contract for this year. Let's see how it plays out. Too. I yeah, do I see that side. I get that. But when you want an extension, you know a player is going to come up on, on that year where he can be extended. You got to be prepared for that shit too. You know, Chris Jones did this before. We've had other players that have done this before. Tyree Kill at one time said he w- would restructure and then said, I'm not restructuring any of my money. Does anybody remember that? I mean, that was a big thing. Holding the golden shoes said he ain't re- re- restructuring any of his money. After he said he would. So I, I get it from both sides, but I think, it, you know, you got to, if you're going to take a gamble on a first round pick like Clyde, then you got to take a gamble on a guy that's been here consistently for eight years and has done his job and pay him somewhat in the middle of market value. And I think the, the middle right now, I mean, 31.7 is way too high. It should be around 29. To, and you got 26, meet him in the middle at 27, five or 28 and move forward and make sure he has his guarantees because that's what it's all about. Those fucking contracts are fictitional. Everybody knows that. I mean, you, I, I make thirty million a year. No, you don't. No, you don't. You got three million this year. You're going to get five million the next year. You're going to get seventeen million then the third year, and then the fourth year you're going to be traded. That's just how it works out. Yeah, you could say, "Look at me, I make thirty million a year," but you really don't. The guarantees is what it's all about. And if you can reach that guaranteed number for Chris Jones, I promise you, he wouldn't give a shit if it said twenty-seven, twenty-six, or twenty-eight. It's all about the guaranteed money. And I bet you anything, he would be very happy if you could guarantee him. I mean, what did Quinn Williams get? Sixty-six million, right? I believe you're right. Sixty-six you're right. million dollars guaranteed. Why would you not give Chris Jones seventy-three? Why would you not do that? In my opinion, that's wrong. I think you should have handed it to him and say, "Okay, here's your seventy-three million. You're worth it. You've done a good job for us for eight years. You've been relatively injury-free. You had a hell of a season." You got a great D-line coach. Come and coach these guys up, and let's have another Super Bowl season. That's just my opinion. I hope that's what Veach ends up doing, but we just don't know. Um, we have no idea what's going to happen, but I, I feel like he's going to be here mid next week. I heard it was around Wednesday he was going to show up. Hey, man, the one good thing about it, he can show up whenever he wants. He's got his own plane, so he can fly in whenever he wants. I don't think he's a pilot, but he does have his own plane, so – Hey, 
you know, if he shows up and he plays and he plays good this season, that's what we need. Because that'll give time. If for some reason a contract doesn't get done, it gives Veach time to find somebody else that can somewhat, somewhat, and this is a very thin line, but somewhat fill his shoes. I mean, I, I've asked numerous people on Twitter to find me one player right now that we can bring in and fill his shoes, and not one single person can come up with an answer. Because there isn't anyone. There's no one out there that can fill his shoes right now. And that's the frustrating part about it. It's like saying, okay, you know what, Patrick? I know you're a generational talent. You're the best quarterback in the league. But, man, I just can't continue to pay you $41 million a year. When I know these other guys are getting 60 and 65, but I really can't go much more than the $41 million a year. You just can't do that. There are certain players you can rotate. There are certain positions you can do that with. He's not one of them. He's just not. Patrick's not one of them. So if we didn't think Tyreek was going to be one of them. If you guys remember right, I wasn't as concerned as everybody else. I see, or even none of us on the show were at the beginning. It was a little bit of a kick of the teeth at first, but then it was like, okay, well, wait a minute. You know, there's a reason why they did it. We know what the reason is. So let's see what happens. And what did he do? What did he do? I mean, he surpassed his numbers with that he had the year before with Tyreek and coached up a lot of players that nobody thought were – everybody called him a bunch of bums. All the bums went to the Super Bowl and won that shit. That's because of that's because of Patrick Mahomes. That's why you need Chris Jones. Because he's the guy that can make everybody else better on that defensive line. So that's just my opinion. I had to get it out. It has been frustrating me for a little bit, you know. And it's just like you gotta you gotta you gotta move from both sides. You can't just sit on one thing. Um, what else we got? That's it. Uh, Chiefs play on Saturday. I'm over these Saturday games. Mm-hmm. I'm not watching college, so yeah, you don't watch college. Fun. You need to watch college. college no, is I'm fun. saying I'm not. I'm not watching college. Oh. So I want bring me my non Sunday games back. Oh, I'll yeah. watch the Chiefs, then I'll watch college. Well, um, I, I I know I mentioned this on the last show, but we have ventured into a new realm of game casting, and if you guys haven't seen it. Go on to um, your phone and download the PSF app. That is, uh, we're going to be hosting the game casting for the Chiefs this season. Sean Salisbury built this entire thing. It's going to be pretty cool. You get a live interaction, video, audio, um, and text, of course. You can say it's pretty much unfiltered. You can pretty much say whatever you want. If you get too stupid, you might get cut, kicked. But there are some moderators that are involved that might think you went a little too far. But I don't think that will happen. Um, it's the most innovative thing. It's, like I said, again, it's it's we wouldn't have done it if we didn't think it was worth it. It's like taking um, spaces and just dumping it full of steroids. Because you got a lot more you can do on there. Um so just download it, join Chiefs, uh, the Chiefs fans, and follow us on the app. And you will get live game interaction from not just us, but from analysts, from former players. They're all going to be on the show at some point during the 17 weeks, and some of them will be on every show. And we also are going to be doing the postseason as well. So make sure you download that and Sign up because it's going to be really cool and a lot of fun. In fact, I got to jump on a meeting with those guys right now. So with that being said, we appreciate everybody for joining and we will talk to you soon. Peace out.